First question is from Kirsten Watson. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. Obviously, last night's game was extremely exciting and electrifying, but now a new day, time to refocus. What is really just kind of the game plan going into this evening? Um, we got a, we got a tough uh, opponent. You uh, Darvish is, is pitching, and uh, we know him pretty well, but he's kind of evolved a little bit um, since we've seen him last. But, yeah, I mean, we got our hands full today. I know Clayton's going to be good. Uh, it's going to be a good game. Um, so I like our guys. And, yeah, last night was exciting, but right now our only focus is today. And you mentioned last night that Bruce, our ground roll had was in town with you all. Had you made any decisions on if you were going to activate him or what that kind of looks like? Not yet. We're, we're, we're uh, he's here in town, but we're not going to activate him tonight. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Next question is from Harry Castillo. Go ahead. Hey, just what, what's in the what goes into the decision not to activate Bruce Dar after the bullpen being depleted last night? Uh, well, I, I think the the bullpen was used, but I wouldn't say depleted. Um, and, and he'll be ready to go tomorrow, potentially. Yeah. Um, how about uh, Lux and AJ? Um, they're both getting better each day. Um, AJ uh, progressed. Uh, I can use him in any situation today. Um, he'll be available. Expect him to start tomorrow. Um, and Gavin, swinging the bat, I would say 70%. So that's improvement. And, and we'll just see kind of where he's at tomorrow. And then, uh, David obviously looked really good last night on back-to-back. -back. Um, is there a world in which you use him more aggressively down the line, back-to-back, -back, shorter outings as a more typical reliever? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, you know, the first, I don't know, 10 games, we didn't really get a chance to – 11 days, maybe something like that. We didn't get a chance to use them as often or find those runways for that three, four inning stint. So we talked and trying to find spots, shorter stints, and that's what we've done. And he's responded really well. So I think that right now, um, that's kind of how I see him as a, uh, you know, a one plus or, you know, guy. Um, but yeah, the one innings is what he's done, but the back to back is something that, you know, he hasn't done a, at all in his career. So we'll, we'll stay away from him for a couple of days and we'll revisit come uh, Monday. Uh, is there an update on Tony Gonsolin? <clears throat> no, I, I know he's uh, in Arizona and um, I just don't know where he's at in his throwing program right now. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Next question is from Eric Steven. Go ahead. Dave, if, if you guys aren't activating Bruzar, are you contemplating uh, like, you know, adding to your bullpen in other ways? For tonight? Yeah, we, we potentially uh, might do something else, Eric. So uh, we're, we're uh, kind of thinking through it. Um, we haven't made a final decision, but it won't be Bruce Darr. And then with your um, uh, the relievers, are, or I guess specifically with David Price, you mentioned not having the like the long outing. I mean, is that just sort of a byproduct of the starters going deep in like basically every game the, the first part of the year? That's exactly the reason. And, um, you know, we can always – you know, if, if Jimmy or, or Dennis or David is, you know, can go one plus, I think that with our guys, that's sufficient. You know, the idea of having to go three or four innings, um, you know, fortunately, it's a good thing because of our starters are with the length that they're giving us. Thanks. Yep. Next question is from Dave Vassa. Go ahead. Dave, you've been able to give Luke Raley an opportunity this week. What have you seen from him? And has anything surprised you about what he's been able to do with those opportunities? Um, no, well, I, I think the defense, uh, I, I trust the defense in the corners. Um, so that hasn't surprised me. I'm happy to see him get opportunities, happy to see him perform. Um, I, I expect him to take good at bats. And, you know, as he continues to, as the league continues to kind of learn him and make adjustments, I'm just going to be interested to see the adjustments uh, he can continue to make. But yeah, seeing him uh, first hit, first homer, playing games like this, it's exciting. What, what do you believe, Zach McKinstry? What's the ceiling for him? Uh, it feels like he can't play any better, but how, how much more room is there for him? Um, he, he's going to play this game for a long time. I think he's got the mindset for it. Um, he's intelligent, loves to play the game, loves to practice, practices right. Um, doesn't, you know, can handle a, a, a big moment. So in the, in the versatility. So, um, I, I don't know, but it's going to be fun to kind of watch his growth. Dave, one more for me. I'm not sure if you answered this last night, but, uh, 
pitching Kenley in the eighth and the ninth inning, where, where does that leave him to, to be the most effective as far as what you were saying last week, trying to give him as much rest as allowed and as needed? Well, with that, <clears throat> first of all, Kenley threw the baseball extremely well last night, um, but he will be down tonight. Okay. Next question is from Ron Kavner. Go ahead. Hey, Dave, you obviously know how a lot of your veteran guys can you know, have handled, you know, these high intensity or big leverage moments and things like that. Do, do you learn anything about your young guys that you, you haven't seen a whole lot of yet um, when they, you know, perform on a stage like this? Yeah, yeah. Every time, you know, a young player takes the field and you see moments and how they respond uh, to success, to adversity, and um, it's good to see, you know, uh, McKinstry made the throw and I don't know if they called it an error, but didn't complete the double play last night, but, um, you know, came back up there and got a big hit. You know, Dennis right there is in a tough spot and punches out one of the best players in the game. So, um, yeah, sometimes, you know, you look at the veteran guys, position players, pitchers, and you know the track record, but the young players, it's fun to see when they get in those spots and how they certainly respond. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Time for one more. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, Dave. Um, obviously, the last couple of weeks have been very eventful with you all getting your rings and then Jackie Robinson Day. Um, you being uh, one of the, la the first uh, black managers since Cito Gaston to get a World Series ring, what do you feel like needs to be done in Major League Baseball to have more opportunity given to more uh, black and uh, men of color to be able to, to manage in uh, various teams around the league? Yeah, I, I think that's uh, – I love the question. I love the conversation. Um, I, I think that Major League Baseball, individually, every organization has got to be intentional and, um, you know, hire people of color. And I think that there's a lot of baseball-savvy men that can – people that can lead the game, you know, lead a team in an organization. So um, I know that the conversations are happening every day. Um, so I, I just, I just want to, you know, talk to Cito and follow in his footsteps and hopefully, you know, paves the way for somebody else and, and more guys of color to, to manage clubs. 